First to our top focus, voting has concluded in the presidential polls in the Maldives. Over 90% voting has been reported. The Election Commission extended polling in the country's uh, presidential election by three hours because of extraordinarily high turnout. Over 250,000 people cast their vote in the Indian Island Ocean, uh, in the Indian Ocean Island nation, uh, to choose the next president of the Maldives. Voters complained of long delays as they queued up uh, out across the country to cast their ballots. Some reported waiting periods of more than six hours. The vote, seen as a referendum on democracy in the country, will decide whether President Abdullah Yameen will win a second term. The polling started at 8 a.m. and closed at 7 p.m. local time. The vote pitted Yamin, who has presided over a wide-ranging crackdown on dissent against opposition figure and longtime member of parliament, Ibrahim Mohammad Soli. Let's go straight across now to Mohammad Aslam, MP and former cabinet minister, joining us from Mali. Thanks very much indeed for speaking with us here on We On uh, Mohammad Aslam. Let me begin by asking you, as per the media reports coming in just a few moments ago, an extraordinarily high turnout of more than 90% has been registered in Maldives. What do these figures tell you? Oh, the figures tell us a, 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 a very clear message that the Maldivians are very eager to vote and then uh, to get rid of, uh, you know, th this dictator in, in the Maldives. Uh, that's that's what the Maldivians want and, and, and that's what we have done today. All right, there's been a widespread condemnation of the Maldivian government's action when it comes to cracking down on dissent. It is a litmus test for democracy, as many are calling it in the country. Um, why do you feel Abdullah Yameen has resorted to such measures over the last few months? Uh, uh, many are saying that he has been acting at the behest of the Chinese authorities. Uh, President Yameen uh, does, uh, he never wanted the support of the people. Uh, he has always, he's, he's been a parliamentarian for quite some, some time. And then every time he has been, won a parliamentary seat, it has not been with votes. He has either uh, rigged the elections or bought the votes. Uh, and President Yamin knows only one thing in politics, and that is uh, to buy votes, uh, to intimidate people, um, uh, creating fear, and then to eliminate uh, his competitors. That's, that's President Yamin. And Maldivians at this time are not ready for it. All right. How valid are the concerns that this election lacked utmost transparency uh, some are also suggesting that the election could have been rigged. Well, the election, the election, the election is definitely not free and fair. The elections commission is 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 biased. It's a, a handpicked group of people by President Yamin, um, and, and and the processes and procedures that uh, uh, the elections commission have been following in is is uh, we have a lot of complaints for that. But uh, there is overwhelming support for the opposition. Uh, in, in the country, even with the rigging and the, the unfairness in, in, in this election, Moldavian people are going to win over this president. What have the aspirations of the people for the last few months been? Many are also, uh, you know, uh, in talking highly of uh, uh, Abdullah Yamin's economic objectives while at the same time uh, ignoring his high handedness. What is the sense that you've gathered from the people's reaction so far? The people's reaction in Maldives is like, we say no to corruption. We want justice to be served in Maldives. We do not want our political re leaders to be put behind bars for no reason, just because they happen to be political opposition to President Yamin. We want justice to prevail in the country. We want to live in a peaceful society. And, 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 and that's the sense. Uh, what, is, what is development without justice and fairness in any society? That is the fundamental thing that every human being wants to have first before having paved roads or, 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 or big buildings um, and bridges. You know, they, they come very secondary in, in, in any human society. And before we let you go, uh, we cannot uh, 
uh, help but ask Beijing, fearing any change in government could affect its interests, while India, of course, is concerned about Abdullah Yamin's uh, cozy ties uh, with the regional <laughs> rival. Uh, what have you made of uh, the equation that Abdullah Yamin has with the Chinese? Many are saying that the country is now staring at a Chinese debt trap as a result of his coziness with China. Well, well, it is true. There's huge debt that we owe to the Chinese. Uh, we really have to pay back. Um, the Chinese, uh, we, we cannot at the same time ignore China, uh, uh, you know, as, as uh, you know, as a development partner, uh, a, you know, for, for any country. But that does not mean that we fall into the traps of the Chinese or any other country for that matter. Uh, uh, this, yes, there's a lot of mess to be is sorted out. Uh, and, and then um, I'm sure the new government uh, um, will find um, ways to deal. All right. We've just lost that line there with uh, our guest, uh, Mohammad Aslam, who was uh, taking us through the nitty-gritties of uh, the Abdullah Yamin China equation. Uh, but as he was pointing out, uh, the significance of this election, the ramifications of these elections are running deep. Why don't we now take a sneak peek into Maldives' electoral history in the past decade? Maumoon Abdul Gayoom ruled the Maldives from 1978 till 2008. In the 2008 election, Mohammad Nasheed defeated Abdul Gayoom. Nasheed resigned in 2012 after the Maldivian security services, the army and the police allegedly revolted against his government for arresting a judge. And in 2013, Nasheed contested the elections but lost to Abdullah Yameen, who is Mohmoon Abdul Gayoom's half-brother. Now, if you are wondering where is Mohammed Nasheed and what is he up to, Nasheed is in Colombo. He is in exile since 2016 when he left the Maldives for the United Kingdom for medical treatment. And since then, he spent time between London and Colombo. Remember, he was jailed in 2015 after President Abdullah Yameen came to power. And in early 2016, Sri Lanka, India and the UK intervened to broker a deal with the Maldives so that Nasheed could leave prison and travel to London for medical treatment. As per the deal, Nasheed was supposed to return to the Maldives after treatment, but he remained in London and later that year got asylum from the UK. What significance, as we've been discussing, does this election really have uh, for the Maldives? Firstly, it decides the fate of democracy in the island nation, one of the most crucial aspects. The election results will determine whether the Maldives will further descend into chaos or not. The last few months have been uh, have seen turbulent times, to say the least, uh, for the island nation. The combined opposition led by Nasheed's Maldivian Democratic Party has accused President Abdullah Yameen and his Progressive Party of the Maldives of rigging the election. The Maldives is one of the many countries in the Indian Ocean where Indian and Chinese interests intersect. China is fast making inroads into what India sees as, as its sphere of influence. Chinese investments in the Maldives, a tiny archipelago of 1,200 islands grouped in about, uh, 20, in about 26 atolls, is strategically located off the southern tip of India. A second five-year term for Yameen will mean consolidation of Chinese influence in the island nation. Yameen has not exactly endeared himself to India by causing up to China. India feels that Yameen has not paid heed to India's security concerns in the Indian Ocean region. And another equally disturbing question for India and the world at large is whether Yameen became more authoritarian than before and damaged the Maldives' 10-year-old tryst with multi-party democracy. The European Union has warned of imposing travel bans and an asset freeze for its part. The United States has also said that it will take appropriate measures if democracy is undermined in the Maldives. Furthermore, denying visas to Indian journalists wanting to cover the election drew widespread criticism from the international community. International human rights organizations criticized a raid on the opposition party headquarters on the eve of the election. We now recap for you some of the most dramatic developments that took place in the run-up to these elections over the last few months. In February this year, a Maldivian court quashed the conviction of Nasheed and eight others. President Yameen responded by imposing an emergency in the country. His government arrested two judges. Subsequently, the court overturned the decision of quashing the conviction. Beneath 
the deceptive calm lies a country divided. India and China spar as the Maldives votes. It's a high stakes battle and the world is watching. Watch the Maldivian muddle all day only on We Are.